Yo, this is George Dr. Frankenstein Clinton saying, uh, you're watching Soul School. They teach you how to do the dog. Oof. Hey everybody, welcome back to Soul School. Now it's about that time to get into a very, very important subject. Tonight, um, I'm very, very excited to announce, some of you may already know, some of you may not know. Um, normally, I don't get into the whole thing with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the American Music Awards and all this, that kind of stuff, because now it seems like it's gotten to a point where it's like kind of somewhat of a popularity contest and it's hard for me to take that kind of stuff seriously, especially in particular the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when you think about great groups like War, Cool and the Gang that have not made it in or whatever. So it's just really kind of hard for me to take it serious. But this year I looked at the list for the first time and actually I saw something that made me very, very happy, which was the one and only Sylvia Robinson. Now, for the, those you may not know, Sylvia Robinson is getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, this is a uh, this is an award that's been long, long overdue. Sylvia Robinson is a very important figure in the history of music, and kind of like what goes on now, even up into the hip hop community, going into orbit. Sylvia Robinson started out in the fifties. Um, her, she had a group called, I think it was Mickey and Sylvia or something like that. It was Mickey and Sylvia. It's been so long since I looked back at that stuff. It was the stuff that my mother used to play like way, way back in the day, like in the 60s and stuff like that. And being a small child in the late 60s, my memories are like kind of somewhat fuzzy and, you know, I have like certain visions of just certain stuff. And I can remember really well back, probably I would say like about 68 Definitely 69, I remember very, very well. But the rest of it is kind of somewhat cloudy. And of course, you would continue to hear the music over and over and over. And so it kind of gets woven within the fabric of who you are, and especially for a cat like me, who I am. And Sylvia Robinson was one of those people I've always, always heard her music. It was always played throughout the house and on the radio and stuff like that. And actually, she would come into prominence once she started her and her husband, Joey Robinson Sr., started All Platinum Records, which was uh, in the New Jersey area. And uh, All Platinum Records was um, the home for the moments, and Shirley and just different people like that, just a lot of good groups that actually kind of came out of that label. And um, they were making a lot, a lot of noise. And Sylvia Robinson in particular was like an incredible writer during the times when, you know, of course, a lot of that attention was given to like Barrett Strong and Holland Dozier Holland and a little bit later on Curtis Mayfield and just different people like that. Well, Sylvia Robinson was one that really, really like late 60s going into the 70s really kind of came into prominence. She started writing for the moment, stuff like Love on a Two-Way Street. She was producer for like Sexy Mama. You know, she gave Al Goodman and Harry Ray and those guys from the moments the ability to like write and stuff like that. And she would write with them. And she was always on the production end of uh, just a lot of stuff. And all those great moments records is pretty much her baby, you know, pretty much. Um, She's a very, very important figure, and even some of the musicians that was over at the uh, All Platinum Record label, you know, Yogi Horton was a drummer that was actually over there, and Yogi Horton ended up playing with Luther Vandross a little bit later on during the time of, like, Superstar and all that kind of stuff with Adderley and just those just different people, Marcus Miller, who were in that band. Uh, Yogi Horton also played with Ashford and Simpson. I think it was the Street Opera album with In a Street Corner and stuff like that. Well he kind of kind of got it going because of Sylvia Robinson and even like the first Soul Train thing by the Rim Shots or whatever a lot of that band you know kind of came from like around Sylvia Robinson and and that whole vibe or whatever it may be and then even um being the great writer that she was she had wrote this song called Pillow Talk, which we all know about that pillow talk of mine or whatever. She had wrote that song for like Al Green. And if you listen to it, it has that vibe of let's stay together or whatever. But um, 
he thought that the song was too you know suggestive because of the uh the sensualness and the sexiness that was in her vocals and this is like you know before marvin gay had really kind of started to get sexy like that you know she opened the door for like marvin gay to express himself like that in a very sensual sexual type of way like some of the stuff that would come later he would do like just to keep you satisfied and i want you you know of course there's different inspirations and prints and just different people but sylvia robinson was already doing that kind of stuff to say the very least when al green wouldn't do uh pillow talk she actually recorded it herself and i think frankie crocker from wbls in new york heard it and the rest is history one of the all-time classic jams of, of, of all time in the history of uh, R&B and pop music or whatever. And then a little bit later on, we would find out that she had, she's basically the mother of all hip hop. She's the mother of it. And this is something that's not ever, ever talked about. She is the mother of hip hop. She basically started Sugar Hill Records. She basically signed the Sugar Hill Gang. She basically signed Cool Mo D. You know, who was a member of the Treacherous Three at that time, Angie, uh, Angie Stone, who was a member of the Sequence, you know, going to funk you up or whatever. And um, let's see if you can get a good look at this. This is uh, the very first release, there we go, of the Sugar Hill Gang. This is what the original first 12-inch releases of Rapper's Delight look, you know, look like before the money kind of got behind the label. And then a little bit later on, it... Uh, this is what the label looked like. And I know a lot of you are probably sitting there like, yeah, I had that record. And, uh, you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And, you know, when the money really kind of started rolling in, it started to look like this. But Sylvia Robinson, had it not been for her, none of that stuff would have actually, or it would have taken a lot longer. Because, I mean, look, we all know that rap has been around since the very ancient of times, you know, just different people you know Gil Scott Heron the last poets and Dolomite and just different people and even going back like to Louis Jordan in the 40s and stuff like that so it's always been there but as far as like the national mainstream she was right there in the infant stages you know her the fat back band and just different people like that but when she started that record company and actually got all those people signed everything that you hear that hip-hop has evolved into it was his sister, Sylvia Robinson, that was at the very infant stages of all of it. And uh, there's not a lot of video of her, like from way, way back in the day. And, uh, but I do have like a couple of clips from like way back, you know, just of uh, her doing pillow talk and stuff like that. But uh, just think about every time that you hear Rapper's Delight, you know, the hip hop, the hippie to the hip, you know, Think about Sylvia Robinson. Whenever you hear Grandmaster Flash the message, just think about Sylvia Robinson. You know, just uh, she was very, 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 very important and still is to this day because basically hip hop is basically taking over <laughs> the whole culture of, of, of most music or whatever. You know, it's 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 evolved into just just a billion dollar industry, just a multi billion billion dollar industry. But the person that actually was at the very infant stages and who deserves a lot of the credit for being the mother of all hip hop, like how they love to say that George Clinton and James Brown was the father of the whole funk thing. Well, when it comes to the rap thing, the mother of that whole, she's the mother of all of that is Sylvia Robinson, who will be inducted into the Rock Roll Hall of Fame. Let's get